So tonight we're um, going to start our Bible study on taming the tongue. And we're coming close to the end, and today we're on week 26, the encouraging, discouraging tongue, excuse me, mm. the discouraging tongue. Mm. And um, mm. we'll be led by Sister Jewel, and I'll be backing her up, and we're all uh, going to have a, a great discussion and a well-needed and timely discussion. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good, hey, look at God, like he's... He orchestrated it to where it happened to be this week that we yes. talk about encouragement. And, you know, that, so um, I'm locked in and I, I appreciate uh, that timing. <laughs> that yes. Timing. So, um, yes, it's going to be interesting. We're going to be talking about the discouraging tongue. But the opposite of discouragement is encouragement mm -hmm. we don't have to just focus on the discouragement we can talk about the encouragement and i'm sure sister jewel is gonna um lead us in in that direction in some way form or fashion or someone's discussion is going to uh lead us in that direction so with that being said i'm gonna ask um that uh brother elton if you can will you open us up with prayer and following prayer i'm gonna uh hand over the floor to Sister Jewel. Mort's supposed to play. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> Don't charge that to my heart. <laughs> Don't charge that to my heart, but my mind. So Uncle Mort. Before or after? After the prayer? Um, let's do the prayer first and then after then we'll do the uh song, the selection, and then Sister Jewel. Thank you, Sister Jewel, for reminding. You're welcome. Brother Elton, you got us? Okay, yeah. I'm putting everybody finished. About here. Heavenly Father, we first of all just say thank you for the guidance, dear Lord. Thank you for those that are able to attend and those who weren't able to, dear Lord, for whatever reason, dear Lord, just continue to lift them up. And we just ask you, Lord, say in your word, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. Yeah. And we thank you, Lord. We got someone we can come to for when we're weary and burdened. You will give us rest in every Father. We just thank you for just continuing to lift up the Johnson family and continue to lift up those who maybe have little aches and pains. The Lord, we just know that you are a healer awesome. and a provider. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this meeting and that we just continue to move and remove all fear, all doubts. Dear Heavenly Father, and just continue to remove all troubles and Trials and tribulations, just focus on your word. Just encourage this word today, the Heavenly Father, but that you may speak somebody and lift them up. Yeah. And though we're talking about discouragement, but we know that you are encouraging the Heavenly Father. Yes. Yes. We yes. thank you for that. Thank you. We thank you. And just, just had the Spirit have his way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That word in that powerful prayer. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Mark, would like to ask permission to put on a a show. You want to put on a show? Not show nothing. So you, need a, you need permission. Oh yeah. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Wait out. a minute, Uncle Mark. I gotta collect the money first, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you say nothing yet. <laughs> yes, sir. Tina's, Tina's email is T-I-N-A. <laughs> Uncle Mark, we're gonna be rich. <laughs> Don't forget your social security number now when you say it. Okay. <laughs> okay, here it goes.
Yeah. <laughs> Standing ovation. Standing wow. Ovation. Right. Wow. Oh, wow. Uncle Mark. Awesome. Wow. Uncle Mark, Tommy didn't hear. Can you play it again? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, wow. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Mark. Too Wow. Wow. <laughs> It's Christmas yeah. now. <laughs> I've never and heard that in my life. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> thank you for always sharing that great gift. Wow. And thank you, Elton, for thank that you. powerful <laughs> prayer. So glad your mother's <laughs> on here tonight, Sister Baptiste. We hear she's <laughs> feeling yeah. much better. Amen. Amen. Man. Of course, we are praying for the Johnson family. Um, I put some suggested discussion questions in the chat box and I will let you know what they are uh, before we get started and at the end of the lesson too. Uh, my suggested questions, and of course you're free to uh, speak on anything you want to. Uh, one, any item um, found in the workbook on pages 119 through 121. Uh, two, uh, describe any Bible example of discouragement or encouragement. Three, describe a time when you were encouraged by someone or you encouraged someone. So that's just the opposite, discouragement or encouragement. Oh, no, number four is describe a time when you were discouraged by someone or you discouraged someone. So three and four is kind of like encourage and discouraged. And then I have a bonus question if you wouldn't, if you want to consider this, if you can. I'm sorry that um, Joyce and Marva are not on here uh, tonight for this bonus question. What do you say or what do you do to encourage someone when the situation is such, so dire that you just have no words? that it's just, it's an unusual situation. And it's so, it's, when it's a Job-like situation today, what would you do if you presented with that situation and you didn't have any words that you could comfort the person with because that, happens i know it happens so thank you all for being on the line tonight and let us get started with our lesson mm. eleanor rigby died in the church and was buried along with her name nobody came so goes the song by the great Ray Charles and originally by the Beatles. Yeah. Elena died in the very place meant to be a sanctuary of encouragement. A place whose very mission includes the words, bind up the broken heart in Isaiah 61 and 11. But in the very place people come to find their lives, Eleanor perished and was buried. 
along with her name. A name expresses the nature of the person named. It tells who that person is, what they are, and what they may become. The name Eleanor in the Hebrew language means God is my light. El meaning God and or meaning light in the Hebrew. Now in the Greek, the name means bright shining one. From her name, one might conclude that Eleanor had unlimited potential to be great. But somewhere in her journey, she suffered a trauma she could not move past. Eleanor Rigby may have been, and I'm just going to suggest this to you, she may have been a casualty of war. She may have been a victim of discouragement. Eventually, that discouragement led to utter despair. And despair, in despair long enough, will lead to a complete loss of hope. And though her body continued to exist, her heart and soul succumbed long before she was buried. Our lesson tonight is the discouraging time. Mm -hmm. And it begins on page 109 of our study book, 30 Days to Taming Your Tongue by Dr. Deborah Smith Pagay. Mm -hmm. On page 109, you will find Pagay quotes Job 29 and 24. Job is speaking to his discouraging friends and has been speaking to them for a couple of chapters. In this chapter, he looks back briefly at his life before he was attacked by this awful and debilitating illness. The King James Version reads it this way. If I laughed on them, they believed it not. And the light of my countenance they cast not down. And I'll explain that in a minute, but that is very close to the Hebrew wording. Job had everything in abundance. He had great wealth. He had a large family. He had every conceivable blessing from God that one could imagine. His very presence, if you read this chapter, provoked awe amongst people before his illness. When he went out to take his seat among the other magistrates at the gate, the young men and the aged showed him the highest respect. When he walked in, even princes left off talking. They refrained from speaking until Job had given his opinion on the matter and his opinion was always the final word. In fact, if you look at Job one and three, it says Job that all of the men, it says Job was the greatest of all the men of the East. And if you study the children of the East in the Bible, uh, some of the children of the East uh, were actually Abraham's uh, children by his uh, wife Keturah after Sarah died. Um, so it could be, a, he could have come from Arabia. We don't know, of course, when Job was written. Um, we don't have that for sure. There are a few hints in Job if you read it carefully. Uh, Job was a great benefactor to the poor. He defended the oppressed. He encouraged men and women. He was greatly respected. He was a man of honor. If he so much as smiled at people, if he laughed on them, they thought, oh, it's too good to be true. Job smiled at me today. It made my day because Job had given them the slightest attention and Job's slightest attention was much more than the attention 
of anybody else because they knew who Job was. And if you look at the next verse in that chapter, the 24th verse, no matter what their problems were, Job was not discouraged by their problems. And he helped them overcome their mm -hmm. problems, even to the point of providing them with a plan to help them fulfill their dreams. And it says that he did walk as a king among his troops. Job was somebody. He did not think of himself as superior to them, but he acted as one that comforted those who mourned. Those he helped showed him such reverence and appreciation. They didn't give him any reason to change his feelings or his countenance. They didn't give him any reason to look down toward him for the benevolence that he showed to him. They were just that grateful. The Bible says in all of this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Job endured great pain, sorrow and loss. He was discouraged by his wife and his friends, but in the end, he rose back up again. God delivered Job from his condition gave him more in his latter days than in his beginning. He had greater wealth. He had a beautiful family. In fact, his three daughters, they say were the most beautiful in the land. And Job gave them a share in, his, in the inheritance with his sons. He had his respect and honor back in the community. In addition, he lived 140 more years and saw generations and generations. The Septuagint Bible, which is the earliest existing Greek translation of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, uh, written some 300 years before Christ and in existence during the time of Christ, says that Job lived 170 more years. So it differs from some of um, our later scriptures, but that could be in the translation because it is hard to translate numbers in the Hebrew. But it says Job lived 170 more years and it also says that all the years he lived in total were 240 years. And the Septuagint, the 16th and 7th, I believe the 17th chapter of the Septuagint also gives you more hints about who Job could be. We only have our American Bible, so we are, we are limited. In the second sentence on page 109 of our book, Paget says, an untold number of individuals have missed their destiny because of someone's discouraging words. Teachers have dashed the dreams of students who had mediocre grades or other shortcomings. Would-be inventors abandoned their pursuit of innovative ideas once family members and society ridiculed them. I suggest to you that discouragement prevented Eleanor Rigby and many other promising individuals from fulfilling their full potential. One fails even to imagine the shipwrecks of life that discouragement has caused. Six sticks and stones may very well break our bones, but bones will heal in time. Words break hearts and they break spirits. And I submit to you today that a broken spirit may be irreparable. The works of some of the greatest artists that have ever lived will never be seen because that young artist was discouraged and never painted them. The writings of some of the greatest literary minds ever to have graced this earth will never be read because they were discouraged and never wrote them. The songs of some of the greatest voices that have ever been known to exist in mankind will never be heard. They will never be heard, the music of some of the giants like Mark, because those people were discouraged and did not sing them. They did not play the music, they did not record them. They shut themselves in and said, I will never play again. 
because they were discouraged and did not fulfill their destiny, we will never ever share the benefits of their greatness as we have shared the benefits of Mort's music tonight. And I submit to you that we have therefore suffered an incalculable loss. Proverbs 13 and 12 states, hope deferred make it the heart sick. A delay in attaining your goals and objectives sickens the heart, but continued discouragement eventually leads to a loss of hope. And without hope, you cannot expect the impossible. Without hope, the sky is unreachable. Without hope, success forever evades you. Without hope, you cannot live. Perhaps you are someone you know have sown seeds of discouragement. Pagay says near the bottom of page 109 that she does not believe that people who have dissuaded others in such a manner deliberately intended to discourage them, but rather spoke out of their own lack of faith in God's ability to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ephesians 3 and 20. And might I add that discourage people, discourage other people. Discouragement is infectious. The Bible records numerous instances of the Israelites becoming discouraged. Pagase sites on page 110, the case of the 12 Israelites sent to spy out Canaan, the land of promise. 10 of the spies brought back a negative report saying they could not go up against the people because they were stronger than them. But Joshua and Caleb brought back a positive report. Let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Numbers 13 and 30. The lack of faith in the very God who delivered them from bondage and led them across the Red Sea caused the 10 discouraging spies to discourage an entire nation. The people cried and wanted to return to Egypt, the land of their enslavement. They spoke of stoning Caleb and Joshua. Because of their unbelief, the 10 spies were stricken immediately with the plague and died. The others wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and no man, over 20, except Caleb and Joshua entered the promised land. Proverbs 12 and 25 states, heaviness is in the heart of man. Heaviness in the heart of man make it a stoop, but a good word make it a glad. Choose words that will lift the heart of others. Pagay says on the second paragraph, on page 112. Even if you cannot envision the dreams of another, at least agree to stand in faith with him for God's perfect will to be done regarding the proposed endeavor. Henry Ford once said that the ability to encourage others is one of life's biggest assets. And indeed, the ability to encourage others is a gift for by encouraging their dreams, you share in their success. So then, my dears, guard your dreams well. Be very careful who you share them with. For there are dream thieves, dream assassins, and just plain dream discourages. If in your life, you have been made to feel that your dreams are impossible to achieve, take courage. Acts 15 and 32 says, and Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. Those who are truly in the faith will confirm and edify you, not tear you down. Finally, put your hand in the master's hand and keep your eyes focused on him. Just remember, his eye is on the sparrow and he watches over you. 
know that your destiny has not been delayed, neither has it been derailed. It is right on schedule. Again, I'm gonna open it up for a discussion. Again, I'm going to read those discussion questions, which I have put in chat also uh, suggested, and you can discuss anything you'd like. Uh, one, any item from the workbook, pages 119 through 121. Two, any example of discouragement or encouragement in the Bible. Three, a time when you were encouraged by someone or a time when you encouraged someone. Four, a time when you were discouraged by someone or you discouraged someone. And then the bonus question, what do you say? What do you do when the situation is so stressful, so distressful that you just can't find the words? Thank you for listening tonight. Beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jewel. That was Beautiful. awesome. Very good. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yes, yes. Very, very affirmative. affirmative. Thank you. Thank wow. you. Affirmative. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, I know you're going to say Eleanor Rigby is a pretend character, but no, there is not. actually an Eleanor Rigby in a grave in Liverpool where the song was wrote. And I know, mm. have known some Eleanor Rigby's, not to mention Miss Nora Tommy, whose name yes. also means light. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, what a link. The way Amen. Actually, and everything <laughs> is backed up uh, by proof. You know, you're some type of historian, Sister Jewel, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. We, I know I grew, grew from it, and um, there's a lot of uh, stuff in that right there. And, um, mm -hmm. We can unpack some of it right now, but it was so much, we, we may take two or three sessions to unpack all that. <laughs> I sent you a copy, we, we uh, Minister Johnson. Uh -huh. I sent you a copy yesterday. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I'm going I'm to I'm soak all that up and, and use that too. <laughs> I took good notes, but uh, it's, it's nothing like having it from the... Um, from the source, so thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, floor is, is now open. She, uh, my sister Jewel, did give us some uh, questions that we can answer, or if there's anything that um, you'd like to just share from your own notes, um, now's the time to do it. The floor is open. Um, I know I got some good stuff, but I don't want to dominate the conversation. I'm gonna let somebody <laughs> else go first. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll answer the one. It's a three part where. Someone was discouraged, mm -hmm. one was encouraged, and someone act on it. And this all comes from Nehemiah. Uh, and Nehemiah uh, 4 and 14, well, first of all, they were rebuilding the wall mm -hmm. that had been burned mm -hmm. out. And uh, let me see um, Sanderbuck and Tobiah was re, re, uh, was talking bad to them and giving them insults on, you know, you can't rebuild this wall. And this is, you're using bricks that have been burnt. So that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And Tobiah even said a fox can, in uh, verse three, a fox can jump over it and knock it down. And then in verse four, they wouldn't stop at that. They kept throwing insults at them. But that's the discouraging part. Now in verse 14, Nehemiah as being the, the wise leader, and I say wise because he constantly was relying on God's word on not his own leadership. And mm -hmm. it was what God, he believed that God wanted. So Nehemiah told them, don't be afraid of the people that's insulting you because they had Sandiba, Tobias, and two other nations that was against them. But Nehemiah, this encouragement part, Nehemiah told them in chapter 4, verse 14, he told them, don't be afraid of them. And he said, remember the Lord who is great and awesome will fight for you 
and your families and your sons and your daughters and your wives and your home. You can't have no greater fighter than that. Amen. And so they believed in that. And then they not only believed in it, but in verse 15, that when our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated them, because the enemies were so scared of God, mm -hmm. they went back to the wall and started working. So it was discouragement from the enemies, encouragement from God, and they had enough faith to work with materials that had been burnt up. So thank you again, Jewel. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Yeah, this, this is really, really good. This is this day, the discouraging tongue, you read that and you think about it. This is the best therapy that you can get. Yeah. You know, uh, we all know that our parents encouraged us what we could do. You could catch the ball. You could read this book. You could write your ABCs. That's where we first got our confidence. That, And they teach you to hold your bottle. They teach you to crawl. They teach you to walk. And you come from an environment like that, and you are a confident person, but you that someone loved you and nurtured you. But as we walk this walk, we meet people who was not blessed with someone to love them mm -hmm. enough to make sacrifices and instill confidence. I once we were paying tuition for our daughters to go to holy names. And uh, I, a, a lady once told me, why are you wasting that money on parochial school? Mm -hmm. you know, and this was a friend, I thought, <laughs> you know. And I never answered her because at the time I wasn't washing myself with Christ. So if I would have told her, I would have slapped her. <laughs> you know, that's not your business what I do for my children. You know, your business is what you do for your children. And, but yeah. I wasn't, and, and I, I couldn't answer it because I was so ticked off, you know. But giving people encouragement, as Eldon and, and Larry know, when you play sports, it's all about motivation. Mm -hmm. you know, just think if Steph Curry's dad had to encourage him to play basketball, yeah. hadn't him enough to teach him and we would what we would be missing out i always loved the kids that i coached it was never about winning the game it was about winning them as their character it was about getting them to perform in life getting them to face things in life because that's the, and when they leave that house the kids who don't have confidence are the kids who that the world eats them up Mm -hmm. You know, they are the ones who the pimps and the drug pushers prey on. Yes. Yeah. The encouragement that you give your child, that you give your spouse. I've seen a million guys that I work with told each woman when they came to work, oh, you look good today. And I said, did you tell your wife that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, did you tell the woman who washing your clothes that she looked good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the person you need to be trying to encourage. Mm -hmm. yeah. My buddy and I, we talked, and all of a sudden, both of them was going like, I'm sending my wife some flowers right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to encourage people, you encourage your children, you encourage the people you love. And I'm going to take one shot at your question. How do you encourage someone who's at their wit's end? You bring them to Christ. It's nothing you can do for him. It's pray. You have to bring him to Christ. And you have to be like that song. Take me to the king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yes. Take him to the king. 
Yes. And and then you have to have them to read Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if he's mm. commanded me to, to be encouraged, to be strong, to be courageous, then nobody else, they can't hurt you. Mm. Yes. If you because if you're following your own understanding, you will fall short every time. Mm. Yeah. You don't think mm -hmm. that the man who blinked and said, let there be light <laughs> can do anything, you know, hey. but you can't invent light. <laughs> mm -hmm. Follow his, the encouragement of our savior and his son, Jesus Christ. But this encouragement, wow. You know, because all of us are going through something right now before the holidays. Mm -hmm. And it's a time where we need encouragement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this was right on time. <laughs> this was perfect. And yes, it was. You encourage and it helped you to encourage someone else. You yes. can't you can't give someone the shirt off your back. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> so you have to be encouraged, and then you can encourage someone else. Yes. So thanks again, Sister Joy. You were on it. Thank you. I would like to talk about uh, number three. A time when you were encouraged by someone or, in, <laughs> or encouraged someone. Well, uh, this one, which number three I have, mine was a discouragement. The first. Uh, when I was much younger, my very first job, I worked with my father. We worked in the same, for the same company. We sat right next to each other, and the place we worked in is a, a, it was a water filtration plant. Mm. So back then, to get to work, you had to get off of the bus like about a mile up the road, mm -hmm. walk almost a mile. George knows about it. She can tell you. You had to walk like a mile to get down to where you want to the job. So I, I started working with him, and then uh, I decided it was time to buy a car so we wouldn't have to do that long walking because in Panama it rains a lot. We get some real heavy rains. So I went there and I got this car and my father's good buddy told him a car was not a necessity. You know, so my father got mad at me for buying the car. <laughs> My, I mean, we worked in the same place, we had to do that same work, but he got mad at me for buying the car. And the problem was that this man used to, uh, my father would, he would take my father different places, but it was always a cost to it. You know, it was never always free. And I don't know if it was jealousy or what it was, right? because he had a car, he had two cars and he had a truck. <laughs> and he really said, I bought a car and I told my father, my father asked me, but why did you buy a car? Why did you, we don't need a car. I said, Mr. Stevens said, it's a necessity, it's not a necessity. So I said, dad, but we work the same place. I can take it to work every morning. We don't have to depend on anybody. And eventually by the second week, the first week he didn't ride with me at all. I rode by myself. He refused to ride with me. Anyway, the second week, he started riding with me. And from then on, I was available, available to take him everywhere and anywhere. And he changed his thought about that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and another one, last week, Joyce and Marva mentioned about my brother, Carlos, who had gotten in some trouble. But when he came out, he wasn't doing anything. But he has been blessed with an excellent voice, singing voice. So one day I told him when he was very depressed, I talked to him and I told him, you know, Carlos, you are given a talent that you should not lose. And I think you should go and start singing again. And he took my advice and he started singing again. And up to this day, he's still singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's right now, I think he's 78 years old. 
-hmm. but he is still singing, which means that if he had gotten, stayed, if he had stayed discouraged by what happened to him, and I didn't encourage him, he wouldn't have been doing what he's doing today. And then also one more, this was a case, my, uh, my, my grandson, when he went to university, he studied uh, TV and movie production. And his father, I would say lovingly being concerned about it, told him that was nothing to study. There's no job market for that in Panama. In Panama. And he got very depressed at times for not being able to pursue what he wanted to do because his father just kept every time on him about that. He studied something that doesn't make any sense. And, but right now he's living in Atlanta and he, he got a job with a little company doing production, doing TV shows, and he's working with that. And I, I admire the way that he's so determined because even though his father tried to discourage him, I, I, I never uh, discouraged him. I always told him it's a good job and it's a good uh, career. But in the meantime, if you can't get anything that you really want to do, do something else while you seek that. And that's what he did. He came here. He worked with different companies here. And he went to the school here. And that's what he's in right now. And he's very contented. He's encouraged. Yeah. Very, very contented. So, you know, like some people, they try to discourage you. And I guess his father meant well, but it's the way he was doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. But my yeah. grandson has kept up with it. And that's because he was never discouraged by us. We encouraged him. Wow. <clears throat> mm, amen. amen. Ah. Yes. And I can add to that. The good thing about it is recently when his grandfather passed away, he did the entire video that went on um, YouTube. Wow. Mm. Wow. Also ran mm. all of our family Zoom, his sister's birthday parties, his parents' birthday parties, <laughs> regardless of where he is, he's the one that has been taking care of all of that. Yeah, wow. mm -hmm. that's so awesome. His talent, we have been using his talents a lot. Yes. Mm. Wow. Um, I want one of the, my contribution is the very first sentence on on first paragraph on page one nineteen, and it speaks to um, how encouragement can make winners. It says cheering mm -hmm. fans provide a home court advantage in sports contests. Words of encouragement can make winners out of people who maybe have thought they were failures. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. needs affirmation and validation at some point in their lives. Yes. Most of us, when we have the power to speak words of motivation and hope, but choose rather to destroy a person's confidence and dreams with discouraging words. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I, I don't follow sports at all, but down through the years, I have seen teams that have just lost every single game. And you hear the, the, the statistics say, uh, you know, so many zero to one, which means they may have won one game during the, the season. But the fans they have remain faithful and they go and they encourage them even if they don't think they're going to win. And I think that that's, that is a really good thing, you mm -hmm. know, because in the sports, in the sports business, you see a lot of teams that you don't, you know, they, they're all, all you hear about them is that they're losing the loop, the most losing team, but their fans remain faithful. Yes. And it's the same thing with like what Mark was talking about, you know, we encouraging words builds people up. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at one instance in the Bible that, that came to my thought was um, the story of Jacob and how he was, um, 
he was um, betrayed into marrying Leah. He worked so hard, you know, to be to so that he would be able to marry Rachel. But then Rachel's dad Laban betrayed him. That's in uh, Genesis, I believe it's Genesis 29. And he ended up marrying Leah. Mm -hmm. Then with the promise that if he worked seven more years, <laughs> he will get to marry Rachel. <laughs> and he could have been discouraged and say, well, forget it. And gone on back to his homeland with, with Leah. But, he, you know, he had that that um, encouragement and that determination to be with the person that he really loved. And so um, that to me was an, an instance of being, you know, being discouraged. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. but, but look at what came out of it. Yeah. Because he ended up, you know, showing Laban that he would do everything that he asked him to do in order to get the, the daughter that he wanted to marry. Yes. And yeah. um, I've seen so many times where, you know, uh, people have said things to me. I had a friend a few years ago. She's passed away. But a few years ago, I, I moved back from Texas to California. I had no job. And I was hoping that I would be able to get back on with, at the time, it was uh, still Pacific Bell, I believe. and then. They changed, you know, they went to AT&T. No, it was AT&T, uh -huh. that's right. And I was just so sure that I would be able to land an, a position with them right away. But that didn't happen. But I had a child to take care of and I was not going to let that stop me. So I just started applying for jo other jobs. And I, I did jobs that I never thought that I had the skills for. But I ended up taking these jobs. And one of them was I became a, a job developer for a nonprofit organization. The blessing in that is that I was helping these young people find work in the fields that they were in. But during that time, I could also you know, be searching for jobs for myself. And it's during that time that I was rehired with the telephone company. But one of the jobs that I applied for was um, I was taking a test one day for police department. And I, this young man saw me at the school. We were all going to take the test. And I guess he assumed I was a teacher that worked at that school. So he asked for directions. And I said to him, oh, I know where it is. That's where I'm headed to. So he looked at me and he said, are you taking the, the test for the police, uh, you know, police guard or prison guard job? I said, yes, I am. He says, ma'am, do you think that you can do that? I said, I can do anything <laughs> I set out to do. So we went into this room and it was a big room with probably over 50 applicants or more. And we took that test. We left that room. Months later, I get a call or information that I was one of the, like maybe the, uh, 10 that they were looking at and they needed to do background and all of that so when I went for that meeting he was there so he said oh we meet again and we went through that process then another time I ran into him at a company downtown where he was working and I says he said are you still waiting on that position and I said yes he said well I dropped out I said why did you drop out he said, well, you know, when they started all that background checking, I decided I didn't want them to be, you know, going into my life that, you know, uh, meddling into my life like that. And I went as far as being put on the list for the city of Fremont. Mm. But in the meantime, the phone company called me and that was my dream to go back to work with them. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. But <laughs> during all of that, I refused to be discouraged. So I had to do some jobs that, you know, was just thought, things that I never thought I would do. <laughs> like working, um, doing inventory. 
and working all kinds of hours. But Larry ought to be glad because one of the things I also did was I was determined that my daughter was going to go to Holy Names High School. <laughs> you know, I was determined. <laughs> so when we got back to California, I enrolled her at Holy Names. And it was only through God's grace that all of that happened. And she finished at Holy Names, but she met Larry during that time. <laughs> he's, he's clapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, and I, I, I was encouraged many years ago. I went to um, Georgia to visit my a cousin. She was dying of cancer, and uh, I was living in Texas at the time. And we went to see her, and she was in the hospital. She couldn't walk or anything. She was just laying there. But you walk into that hospital room. And Maggie had the biggest grin on her face. She was just so happy to see me. And another friend of ours who was living in DC at the time, she was there too. And every day we stayed at Maggie's house and every day we would go to the hospital and spend hours with her. And those hours were the most encouraging times I have ever had with anybody. I could not believe that someone who was laying there dying of cancer could encourage me as much as she did wow. you know and uh, awesome. when we left out of there my friend Gloria and I looked at each other and we says wow we went there first of all we walked in kind of sad she would not let us be sad mm. you know that was the last time I saw her a few weeks after I went back to uh, Texas she passed away and today I see her daughter on Facebook all the time. And I see her face almost every day because she looks just like her mother. <laughs> and I remembered, and her daughter wrote a book recently and dedicated it to her mother. Her name is Magnolia. So she named the book Sweet Magnolia. <laughs> and everything, when, she, when I was done reading that book, I told her, everything you said about your mother is true wow you know she was the most encouraging person i have mm -hmm. ever known wow it's an angel yes Man. but um and this discouragement can really tear people down so the yeah. bible has many many scriptures about it but it also when i read some of them they're very encouraging to me because it always starts out, it seems like it starts out, it, it can be this way, but, you know, this seems like there's always a but. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yesterday, wow. yesterday I was in a store where I work and I was paying my merchandise. And when I reached to the cashier, she looked very sad. She's a very nice, very soft girl. So I said, what's wrong, Anastasia? And she said, I will be leaving this job soon. I don't like it. And I said, well, we had a conversation a couple of days ago, and you were happy, and, and you always come into the room, and you always have the smile. She says, no, some of, some of these people here don't like me. And I say, if you like what you're doing, keep doing it and pay no attention to those people. All of them are not the same. They are, there are people here that the word that they always hateful, right? Mm -hmm. Hateful. But they're really nice people here. And wherever you go, you can find those two types of people. Yes, so sir. you cannot listen to the <clears throat> negative. You have Amen. to just keep on going, you know, and trust you in yourself. Yes, you know? yes. And then I said to her, okay, I gotta go, but when I come Friday, we're gonna keep on talking, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Because she I don't know what went on, and I really don't care what went on with her, what was the issue. But yeah. I just want her to know that they have nice people there, and if you like the place, you work around those that are like that, you know, you yeah. put them mm -hmm. to a side, you know. Mm -hmm. 
that's all I have to say. I guess I encourage her. I don't know. I hope so. Oh. Because I would like her to say she You encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And about my grandson, I was one in the that was telling him to that why you study that career? Because I didn't think that he would migrate here after in Panama, and I, I could understand his father issue. Um, in Panama, it's not a career that's going nowhere, you know. And although I'm the one that paid his school, I, I pay for him to study that, you know. But when he came here and he used to talk to me, and he would sit on and tell me, "Grandma, you don't understand this thing, you." you think that I'm, I want to be a movie star. This is not, a, this is not about being a movie star. I'm the person behind those cameras, taking the shots, taking the, the moves and, and the scenes and things like that. And, you know, and I said, okay, I get you. And he did, um, he did two, he did a, a here in the house, he did a little um, dramatization with some of the actors and they come out fairly good. And I could see on the second one, he did three of them. Mm -hmm. One here in the house, one by some guys in up north that came out oh, very okay. And he just, just did one that he sent the information to us to look at it on the YouTube. And that one is very good. So, you know, he progressing. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he getting yeah, better yeah. and better, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, as Mar said, he loved what he do. So I, whatever I told him in the past, no, I only encourage him. I said, no, you, you're going to be that man. Of, you're going to say, you're going to be the one going there. And I got to thank my grandma because, because. <laughs> 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 <Yes>. uh, beautiful. <laughs> mm. Beautiful. Okay, I would like to speak about a pastor. I didn't meet him. He came to my church about a month ago. He was a visiting pastor. His name is Tony Loden. He stated that I believe he came from North Carolina. That's where he was raised. And he said he was raised in a trap house. And for those who don't know, he said a bootleg house or a speakeasy. Maybe this will explain it, he said. He said he went to school every day, but he had to be home right after school. If he did not make it home in time, there was a braided whip wow. that would hit his back. Wow. He would be beaten by his mom and she would call him names that he couldn't say. She would say that he was a no good like his dad. And wow. she said, he said that she called him the end name more than any white person ever did. Mm. Wow. Okay, but then he had his Nana. He said, my Nana, promised me that if I came to church every Sunday, she would make me a banana pudding, uh, you know, banana pudding dessert. And he said he focused on that every Sunday. Wow. He went to church and he would go home with his Nana. Mm -hmm. And he said she started sending him upstairs to take his clothes off. And she would come upstairs and she would get the Vaseline and cocoa butter and mix it together. And she would massage his back wherever is the wounds were that his mother beat him every mm. day. Wow. And she said, <clears throat> she, what, what was that that she said? That same, see? It's going to come to me, y'all. <laughs> Take your time. Yeah, yeah, it's going to come to me. What we always say. Anyway, it was, it's, it's a, a message from the Lord. Mm. And she rubbed his back. 
-hmm. And she rubbed it and she repeated that every Sunday over his back. And she said, you will never borrow from anyone. You would be the leader. You would always be ahead and not behind. And she did that to him every Sunday. Mm. Wow. And he said, look at me now. Mm. My mom, my grandmother's words have come to pass. <laughs> he said mm. that he was a minister for President Carter. President Car he is President Carter's minister today. He said he ministered for two presidents at the same time. Mm. And Hallelujah. he said, would you believe that I took care of things for the last president that sat, which is Trump. Oh. He said, but you know what? I don't worship them. I worship God. Amen. And regardless to what anyone says, that's what I did. And this is where I'm at. And I am so proud of that guy. He's not mine, but I'm proud of him. Because whatever happened to turn him around, which I know is the Lord, yes. he has turned around and he said he wishes his grandmother was alive to see it. Mm. Wow. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Wow. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Very encouraging. That's very encouraging. I've heard so many encouraging things tonight. <laughs> And I have a few things I, I'd like to uh, share. Um, first, I must say thank you to Sister Jewel for that that great history lesson. Yes. I know more about Job yes. right now. Ooh. I learned in that few minutes, learn more about Job than I have in my entire life. You know, so mm -hmm. I have a deeper understanding and respect for Job. And he, um, the most impressive thing was that when you were saying just his presence blessed other people just in presence was an encouragement and i know people like that i know people that just them being around makes others feel better pastor is one of those people pastor is, is similar to job in that um he has an uplifting spirit and without him even having to say a word you know and there's other people who i know that um they're what you call it their vibe it, they got good vibes Yes. And um, I've been told that, you know, I'm a positive person. Somebody, people mm -hmm. have told me that, man, you're just so positive all the time. And <laughs> I do try to uh, see uh, the silver lining in, in situations when other people don't. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel good when somebody tells me that, you know, I make them help them feel better and, or I've gave, given them an encouraging word. It encourages me to continue to be encouraging and optimistic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you, somebody mentioned that um, discourage people, discourage other people, but encourage yes. people is the same thing. We encourage other people as well. Yes. It goes both ways. And um, I'm surprised nobody mentioned it, but I'm gonna go ahead and mention it because it's the uh, best motivational speech ever written. And that comes from Joshua 1. <laughs> the first chapter one of Joshua, the first 10 verses, first nine verses, pretty much, before, I think it's one through nine or one through 10, is the most motivating speech, motivate, the, the best motivational speech ever given. I, that's what I'll say. Yes. Because it, he was talking to Joshua, but he's still speaking to us to this day, all these thousands yes. of years later. It's still mm -hmm. it's so encouraging. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, you know, so yes. we know it came from God, <laughs> you know, so um, that's one of my, my, my favorites is Joshua 1, because it's so encouraging, and that kind of leads me to answer that question that you asked, the, the bonus question, Sister Jewel, mm -hmm. what do you do when you reach that end, you know, the, like you've done all that you can, and, and you know, I'm kind of um, uh, paraphrasing, but once you've done all that you can, the the lyrics of one song says you just stand. Thank you. Know? And you stand on God's word is what I would conclude to, and, and say for myself that, you know, believe the report of the Lord. 
Yes. Once you reach the, the, the end of the rope, when you can't do no more, because on our own, we could do so, so much. But, you know, I say this all the time, but when we allow our best to become God's best, that's when the supernatural things happen. So yes. when we reach the end of the rope, stand on God's word. You know, that's that's the thing that I would say that we all can do. And it's, um, it's so comforting because people who don't have a relationship with God, what do you do? Mm. Like, I don't, like, man, I don't, that, that's, woo. <laughs> That's rough right there. If you don't have someone that extra helps to, to help push you uh, on when you don't want to go on anymore. So that's that, the, the word of God and knowing that I have a relationship with God encourages me more than anything else when yes. I'm discouraged, especially when I'm discouraged. Um, another thing is like we were talking about how um, fans uh, cheer the, their team on and it's a real thing you know the home court advantage is real um being an athlete i know about that and um i'm gonna just give this uh example one time i was at a, a football game and we were in uh it was skyline playing against like a, a doherty valley that's the name of the school uh in san ramon and they're a predominantly white school, and I'm not being uh, prejudiced or anything, but they're a predominantly white school, and we were playing Skyline, which is the predominantly black school in football, you know, and the, the, the teams reflected, you know, black school against white school almost, and Skyline was winning for a while, and then this was a game at Doherty Valley. They started cheering and, you know, there was far more fans there for Doherty Valley than it was for Skyline. And it was only a few of us. All of a sudden, they started chanting this, um, this cheer. I believe we will win. I believe we will win. And, you know, it, it sounds weird to me because I was like, that sounds like a seance or something like that. That sounds like they doing some weird stuff over there, you know. But they was, I believe we will win. And lo and behold their team started picking up their, you know, their activity and the game did turn around. And I was like, ain't that something? Because I was cheering just as hard as I could for Skyline, but our little cheers were being drowned out by the other teams. And after a while, the Skyline players, they, I saw it, like literally, they went from being, you know, all, all confident that they were going to win, they became discouraged. Ooh. So the fans were cheering the other team on, but it was discouraging the Skyline team. Mm. So it had a double, it was like a double-edged sword. And I yeah, said, oh, double can, you, can you believe this? <laughs> so that home court advantage, that home field advantage is real. Mm -hmm. I almost liken it to like when uh, we're preaching. The encouragement from the... Uh, the, the pews encourages us in the pulpit. It really does. When somebody says "Amen" or gives you a hand clap or you know, um, get, you know, says something back to us, it encourages us to continue on in the pulpit. Uh, mm -hmm. Pastor says it all all the time. Talk back to me, you know. <laughs> yeah. and I know what he mean. I know what he's talking about when he say that, you know. Or when somebody says, "Can I get an Amen?" You know, that's that's gaining or getting encouragement from the crowd from you know everybody else and it's also participatory in that you know we're in agreement you know we're getting somebody to participate but it's encouraging as well um i like what i forget who was talking about it but i think it was brother tommy who was saying our first lessons come from our parents and that is so encouraging in that mm -hmm. There's a, um, <laughs> I wish I could show it, but there's a, um, a, a, um, illustration that's, it has a kid who was raised by a um, normal, had a normal upbringing like you and I, it looks like a kid um, expresses uh, a, a need by crying. Eh, eh, eh a responsible parent is gonna respond by meeting that need. And then the kid goes to a calm state and then back to normal. 
an irresponsible or a dysfunctional parent not going to respond to the kid's need. And then when their need is met, they stay in an agitated state. They don't never get that calmness or come to a baseline. And some kids live in that state for their entire upbringing. Some of those kids are represented in our juvenile halls, in our prisons, you know, people become adults and they stay in that agitated mm. state. They never get to mm. that baseline like you and I because they haven't had their needs met. And mm. that's, 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 that's um, the root of a lot of difficulties and challenges that some of our kids have. They haven't had their needs met and because they haven't had their needs met, they stay in that agitated state. Mm. So I uh, believe that was you, Brother Tommy, talking about it. And that's a real thing. And that's I see it all the time. Oh, with, yeah. Uh, youth that I work with. And Brother Elvin, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I get amen on that one. Yep. And there's a quote that I saw that we have at Juvenile Hall in the hallway. And it says, um, the best way to help yourself sometimes is to help someone else. And it's true. Um, I see some of the kids being encouraging to the other kids and it's more effective than sometimes the adults when we try to, you know, console them or, you know, talk them up to them about the issue going on, their peers can reach them a little bit better. And you should see some of the, the kids just laying on the, uh, one of the, another kid's shoulder crying, you know, or, um, just, um, and the other kid encouraging them, oh, it's going to be okay, rubbing their head or, you know, just, just consoling them. And um, I find that quote to be true. Sometimes the best way that you can help yourself is to help somebody else. Because mm. it kind of makes you forget about your own little old problems that you have. <laughs> it has, has happened with mm. me. Um, and that um, it reminds me of that, that, that uh, word in Proverbs, a word fitly spoken is like... Uh, a, a, I believe a, a, a plate of gold, golden apples. Or I'm, I'm, I'm misquoting that, but it's, it's, it's saying that when somebody says something to you, it can be that's it, at the right time. It can be so encouraging. It can feel mm -hmm. good. It can be valuable. You know, it can be valuable. Um, let's see. Encouragement. Oh, promotes determination. So. Mama Jordan, you were just talking about it. You were determined, right? And when you can get an encouraging word, it can help you go further than you would had you not had that encouraging word. You know, um, it answers that bonus question. Again, it's a part of the answer to that bonus question as well, Sister Jewel. Like when you got to the end, what do you do? Sometimes we can get uh, encouragement from those around us. Yes. Now, we have to be careful with that, but it can be effective when you got a good group of people around you. Example, like right now in this Bible study, you know, this is, I'm going through a tough time, right? But being around the right people can help mm -hmm. you be encouraged to be able to move on. And I've had so many people reaching out to me, friends, coworkers, you guys, my church family, other family members, just people who I haven't even heard from in, in, in a long time, sending encouraging words. And um, it's helpful. It helps. It does. I mean, it really mm -hmm. does make a difference. And, um, you know, I've been the person who's been praying for others and I've been the person who's encouraged others. And mm -hmm. um, look at God, he's giving it back to me right now. So I appreciate uh, being encouraged and appreciate all the prayers and the well wishes and the good vibes that come. When I went to Jamaica, you know, that, that was one of the things that they said, oh, is this, they talked about the good vibration, you know, having the good <laughs> vibes. It's a real thing when you are having um, yeah. a positive attitude, it makes a difference in your life. Just like if you have a negative attitude, it makes a difference in your life. When you have someone encouraging you, it makes a difference in your life. And if somebody is discouraging you, we have to be careful not to let it affect us. And the story about the Israelites was the greatest, I mean, the, the wonderful example of somebody being discouraging and God not liking it. <laughs> if somebody's being a discourager 
And if you're allowing somebody to discourage you, I'm going to refer them back to this story right here because God killed those people. Mm -hmm. he, he, it was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. He was like that. He showed how much he disliked the discourage somebody being mm -hmm. discouraging. And also he didn't like that somebody, I mean, he didn't like those who were allowed the discouragement to stop them from, you know, moving forward because mm -hmm. that is like worrying. And in, in the word, it says, don't worry about anything because it's basically saying that you don't trust that God can do the things that he said he was going to do. We yes. got to the report of the Lord, not mm -hmm. the report of the circumstance or not the yeah. report of the situation. If we believe in the situation, then we're not believing in the Lord. So that's why it's displeasing to him. Um, and that's why it, 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 it was displeasing him that the Israelites didn't trust that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. And those that didn't trust it, they didn't make it. They didn't make it. And it's just that simple. So I love that story of um, about the Israelites. And I got to I've, I've seen that before that, you know, they had some consequences, but I didn't realize how steep the consequences were and how swift the consequences were until mm -hmm. I was doing it again. So being discouraging is not a good thing, but being <laughs> encouraging is pleasing to God. Yes. And the Bible, I, you know, Joshua chapter one is the best motivational speech ever written, but the entire Bible is pretty much a motivational <laughs> tool. Mm -hmm. it's, oh yeah. And, and, and motivation and encouragement can, are interchangeable. You could use those phrases or those two words interchangeably. You could say instead of a motivational speech, you could say I'm giving a encouraging speech, <laughs> you know, um, because they're they're one in the same. Um, I know I just said a lot. And there were a couple more things that I, that I probably could say, but the the. Um, feedback that you guys have given. I got some good notes. Mm -hmm. um, I had a great history lesson and I'm feeling encouraged right now. You know, I really do feel mm -hmm. encouraged and um, mm -hmm. I appreciate everybody's encouraging words and spirit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I uh, guess I'm oh, Elton, I'm sorry. No, I was going to uh, say that, you know, I, uh, in terms of further in the Bible, I, I like the uh, like the whole Bible, but I, in terms of uh, Noah building the ark during that period of time where it never rained, and and mm -hmm. and, 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 he, and God spoke to him, and he was obedient to the word despite all the naysayers that you know why was he doing this because um, <clears throat> because of the Lord, and God wanted people to have time to repent as well but um it was you know that that was encouraging because not only that but it was i thought about all the people back from abraham isaac that they when they listened to the word of god obedient and regardless of what anybody had said they were determined because you know they 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 believe it and, and through their faith they trusted in god and that's that was encouraging to me that you know in my in my walk that you know, as long as God said it, you know, I'm able to do it. You know, no matter what the naysayers, I don't care if it's budget or not, I'm determined to get it done. So I got to stand on one of them corners and ask for some change back, you know, get a part-time job and make it done. So, you know, it was, it was encouraging because no matter if God put it on your heart, for one, I know he ain't gonna let you rest until you complete it. So yes. it was, I was encouraged about it, you know, just knowing all the other uh, prophets in the Bible that, that that was obedient to God's word and they listened. And uh, um, working in, in juvenile, you know, you, you see a lot of discouragement, like Mr. Larry was saying, and it's it's mentally draining as well. But you, that's why, you, you know, you got to be prayed up because people that come from dysfunctional homes are people that are totally kids, I say kids, that are ridiculed and uh, degraded all the time. And when they try to encourage them, the first thing that comes up is the thought, that negative thought comes up. You trying to turn that around, but it, it, the longer they stay, the, you can see the change 
But as soon as they go back into that environment, you know, they turn around and come right back and, you know, and, and so, you know, you try to do what you can, but at the same time, you got to uh, make sure you're not falling into them traps. Because sometimes we do get discouraged, but we know uh, who lifts us up. And, and that guy, I was in a positive home and with, with love and nurtured and you could do all things, put your mind to and stuff like that. So it was encouraging, uplifting. So when I hear the negative word, it just bounced off because I never heard the negative words in the home. So, but at the same time, the negative words that was constant in the home, when somebody was encouraging, the first thing they say is, no, I can't do it. I'm, I'll call it their self a name. So I it was just, at the same time, you, you just, you had to be prayed up at the same time so you don't fall into the same traps. But I remember one time I was in freshman in high school and I was just uh, walking by McDonald's. Uh, I like the old one. I don't see what you got to do to own one of McDonald's. My friend said, nah, you got to have a million dollars. I said, nah, I ain't got no million dollars. I never thought about it. <laughs> but not knowing that there were schools out there that could help you out and stuff like that. But I wish I'd known back then that could, you know, Hamburg University, as it was called, but that it was encouraging people to, you know, if they had an entrepreneur, other business that was at different uh, revenue avenues, I mean, to get reaching your goal. But, you know, when you're young, you don't know. You, but if somebody was there to encourage you, the right steps to take. So I, was, I always thought about that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Hey, the Hamburger University, I got a quick story about that. Um, one of my sister's friends uh, from high school, she um, got pregnant her senior year in, in high school. And she was like, I got to get a job, you know. And my sister worked at Shoe Town at the time. That was a place where, you know, I don't know if you guys remember Shoe Town, <laughs> but she was working at Shoe Town. And my sister helped her get a job. This same young lady, Went to Hamburger University, uh, hmm. brother, and she yeah. now owns six McDonald's. I like that stuff. And she's a multi-millionaire, multi-millionaire. Yeah. From from go and she was like, I got to do something. And she started off at Shoe Town. She became the manager at Shoe Town, and the manager hmm. that who she replaced at Shoe Town ended up going to McDonald's, becoming a manager because they were making more money. Remember, remember this other young lady was like, you know, she's a good worker. Put her, put her under his wing, and they both ended up going to McDonald's University because they were still, they were managers at McDonald's, and now they own mm. McDonald's. So? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So while you got discouraged, she got encouraged. encouraged and, yeah. And look at look at the difference. Uh -huh. <laughs> you made it there. Yeah. Yeah. So encouraging word can go a long way. Yeah. Uh, a young man, he could do anything. His name was, uh, what was Mike? The dough mixer. Uh, he, he was, Robinson. No, he was union rep. <clears throat> he was uh, not the union rep, but he was a shop stewardess. Anyway, he's from the uh, Richmond area. This guy raised pigeons. And Mike Tyson, Walden. Mike Walden, uh, he raised pigeons and Mike Tyson raised pigeons. So they was at a flyer off and Mike Tyson came to his house and they had to block the street off to see his birds. And Mike Tyson was buying pigeons from him. But this, that was okay. But Mike didn't have the confidence in a lot of things. He went to school and played baseball with three guys who made it to the professional league. And, and Mike's father was an alcoholic and he never came to the games. And, and so Mike was just playing it because all the kids in the neighborhood <clears throat> was playing it. And I went bowling with Mike, he almost bowled a 300. <laughs> mm. you know, he could do anything, but at, he said, I just didn't have nobody to encourage me. Mm. He said, I was just, and he was left-handed. So he says, I used to strike out Claudel Washington all the time. <laughs> he was talking about these guys that 
Uh, our one of the guys is in Hall of Fame. I can't call him a fan. He played with St. Louis, in the Bears, then he played with the Giants. And Mike had pictures of him. They was a 13 years old playing baseball together. Mm. But because he didn't have the encouragement, he, yes, he was a factory worker like the rest of us. So that encouragement uh, is awesome. And mm -hmm. Narissa and I know the same kid that went to Holy Names. Narissa knows the kid and my daughter knows the kid. And they all three graduated from Holy Names. And anytime a Holy Names girl go out and take a test, they finish in the top five. Wow. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. my both of my daughters are blessed with academics they got from their mom. And uh, <laughs> they, my daughter took the city of Oakland's test. She finished number three. And the reason she didn't go because that lady was working for Ronald Dellums and was hiring all of her relatives. Mm. And so, but she also finished number two in Marin. And so she got a city job in Marin. And, and my oldest daughter, she uh, from Holy Names, she works for the city of San Francisco. They are getting her to finishing up her degrees. And she told me that the money is unlimited what I can make after I finish this mm. that they're sending me to in San Francisco. But her Holy Names education scored so high when she went to work for 311 in San Francisco. She wasn't there two months. They made her a supervisor. Mm. You know, and, and but you, Amen. you have to love your children enough to make the sacrifice because we was eating spaghetti five days a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we but, ain't beans and rice. So. <laughs> yes. And and I know and fried chicken. I know what Elton's mom did for her, all of her children. Yeah. All wow. of them are successful. Yeah. All four of her children are successful. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's up to them how far they wanted to go with their success. Yeah. But you have to love when God gives you that gift. It's not about you anymore. It's about that child, about that encouragement of that child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have to sleep in your car in between jobs, that's what you do to give that child an opportunity. Yeah. If this is, this yeah. is mm -hmm. if people had read this, what we're reading now, there would be less abuse in the family. Mm -hmm. There would be less homelessness in the family. This book is teaching us each, like I said before, how to get in a closer walk with the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's through your tongue and your mind. So again, my brother, thank you for this book. This is awesome. It is. Yeah. Um, I'll piggyback off of what Larry said. The Bible is so encouraging. But the thing is, when we do stuff like Elton says, you know, I'm going to keep on doing this because I believe and I have faith and I believe. We don't know, but the Bible is so encouraging. And we see every time when somebody's encouraging the Bible, we can see God back it up. Mm -hmm. Everything that God says that this is going to happen and each one could not see it. Sarah could not see that she was going to have a child. And not, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and Elizabeth could not see. They both laughed. Um, who was that? They had, I think it's Tamar and um, is that Rebecca that had the twins, Jewel? Oh, yeah. With Joshua, Joshua and Esau, they could not. Isaac and Rebecca, yeah. Yeah, they could not. They could not see, but God backs it up. So everything that God says gonna happen, and now we say that it's in my heart or it's in my head. I believe I can do this because God is telling. 
I believe God's going to do this and God's going to help me. But in the Bible, God actually told people from Gener Genesis, from Genesis 1, he was <laughs> someone. He told someone, he told uh, Adam, you're going to have a lot of people, a lot of generations after you, you know, and, and he only had a few kids. Okay. But God constantly backed everything that he said, every mm -hmm. encouragement that he said, we could read where he backed it up. He came through every single time all the way until the last word in the last Bible was about Jesus. And he, he said, there will be no more tears. Mm -hmm. There will be yeah. no more pain. Amen. It won't be no more worrying. And every time somebody, it's a encouragement to you too, Larry. Every time somebody passed away, guess what happened? There's no more tears. There's no more pain. <laughs> From the last word in the Bible, that's what he's, and he back it up every single time. Mm. So Go ahead, preach the word. if we're going to believe somebody that we can physically see, say, you know, uh, I'm going to go to the hamburger mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, uh, get rich off of having a McDonald's. We can see that. That's that one time. We got 66, by, 66 books in the mm -hmm. Bible telling us what he done backed it up way before we seen physically mm -hmm. somebody back, somebody physically doing what they wanted to do because they had faith. So God, he back he backs it up. Every he's this is so encouraging. With a backup. We can stand it. We see it because we have faith, but we don't know. But mm. in the Bible, you 99 years old. You didn't have a baby. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, y'all talk about Joe, right? This is the part that gets me. Yeah, this. I'm talking to the women's now. This woman had grown kids. You hear me? Mm -hmm. They had their own place. Ten of them grown. This woman had ten more kids. Yeah. <laughs> and kids was gone. Okay. So God can do that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nobody but God. I said, man. Nobody but God. Nobody but Mark, God. We got a shot out of Mark. No, y'all don't. <laughs> uh, look, I'm let I look. Ain't Tony, I'm speaking for you too. No, y'all don't. Ain't no 10 kids coming out of here. <laughs> but thank you, Jewel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Thank you. That's beautiful. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for all of your comments, uh, for your, your your smiles and your vibe, your your energy, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's real. It's real. Yeah. Um Sister Jewel, I don't I don't know if you have or anybody else has more, but uh if we have a few more comments. If, if we excuse me, if we don't have any more comments, I'm going to uh, ask Sister Jewel if she has any more to offer. Oh, I just want to thank everybody. And I feel encouraged tonight. I always feel encouraged uh, by all of you, by Martin Toady, by Tommy and Tina, by Joyce, by Myrna, by Elton, and Sister Amita on here tonight. We always feel yeah. her, even when she's not on here. And then even though uh, Marva and Joyce are not on here, I just feel that they are really wanted to be on here tonight, and I and 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 I just feel so encouraged just by their their spirits are here and here. So Joyce, please tell them we felt their spirits and um, and we love them, and uh, thank you all. I feel so encouraged. Continue to be encouraged, uh, Brother Johnson, and your dear mother is one of those encouraging people. She is always 
when she see me, just hug me yeah. and tell me how great I am. Yeah. And I love her so much. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just mm -hmm. thank, thank everybody for always being so encouraging. It's, mm -hmm. When I come here, it's like coming to a resting place because even when I don't show my face, I'm I'm tickle pink. Yes, all <laughs> right. Somebody saying something funny and I'm clapping my hand and saying amen when somebody saying something that amen. I should be clapping for. It. So I, I don't want to hold you any longer, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. You, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Sister Jewel, because my mother is one of the most encouraging people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She, I mean, she might not even never have seen you before. I don't care who it is. She'd be trying to, oh my God, come here. Let me hug up <laughs> and, and make things better. She's yeah. a very, very encouraging person. You're absolutely right when you say that. She is like hyper encouraging. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I, I'm, I'm feeling encouraged. Um, and you notice that the title of this was the discouraging word, but we didn't even go there that much. We talked no. about yeah. encouragement than anything else. That was in our spirit and in our hearts, you know. So yeah, I thought that's 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 fitting, you know, for for, for this group and for us to be talking more about encouragement than discouragement. And yes. I kind of figured that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So if there's uh, not anything else, um, I don't know. I was going to maybe ask. Uh, Sister Tina to take us out in prayer. Oh, okay. Thank you. Heavenly Father, you are the I am that I am. Mm -hmm. Your words give us encouragement, not discouragement. You are the great teacher, the great parent, the great yes. we can go to when we are down and don't know what direction to go. Yes, Lord, yes. You are the great one to go to when somebody has came to us and tell us we cannot, we should not, we must not do this, yes. but put it in our heart that this is a direction that is worthy of you. As long as we do what's right mm -hmm. for God in your eyes, Lord, we have your backing. We trust yes. you, we worship you, and whatever we do, Lord, we will always give you all the praise. Lord, thank you again thank you, okay. with all of us tonight. And Lord, please put your, your guidance and give your love to the Johnson family. Yes, Lord, yes. We pray for the Johnson family with all our hearts. Because all of them, every last one that we have met, they always had a smile on their face. Yes. And they always made us smile. And personally, Lord, I have not hugged one that hugged me so tight. It was like, when will they let go? Because I can't breathe. <laughs> but yes, Lord, 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 no one can encourage us like you. Yes, Lord. You have shown time and time again you are the one to go to. Yes. yes. To you tonight, Lord. Yes. Thank you for guidance. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just have one thing. I was on mute and didn't realize it, but I learned early, uh, but just before I came on that the deacon from my church passed away today. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm. Today. Wow. Oh. We prayed for him last week. Oh, okay. Yeah. For the family. And home to be with you. Yes. Lord, Lord, comfort the family. Please. What's their last name? Safe. S C A I F F E. Okay. Safe. He went on home and, you know, <clears throat> Um, absence from here is present with the Lord, and with the Lord. he is a deacon. We know he's there with the Lord. That's right. Comfort, and know. he was in my Sunday school class, and we miss him because he could pray. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> will, as soon as he came in, we knew we was going to have him pray us out. Yeah. He prayed mm -hmm. himself into heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Man. Yeah. <laughs> man. Wow. Yes. A very tough time of year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Very tough. Man. Yeah. And I, I, oh, um, I asked him for prayer for my father in law. Me. So much wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, uh, wow. Next month, seven. Mm -hmm. Next mm -hmm. month, he will be 101. Amen. Wow. Wow. Keep him in, wow. in the Hampton family in your prayers. Yes. Yes. Wow. He's uh, 101. Start, he's starting to transition mm, in yeah. his life. You know, he's 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 getting closer mm -hmm. to the Lord uh, physically. It's just not there anymore. His mind is still sharp. Mm -hmm. the diseases that come with age are starting to creep in. Mm -hmm. But we are not sad. Mm -hmm. yes. If every child could have their father for 100 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So yeah. we've been blessed. It's, Amen. You know, we, we we like we're like three year olds though. As long as dad was there, mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid of nobody. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought my dad was uh was Joe was Joe Fra was Joe Frazier <laughs> with anybody. Yeah. And uh, but it's been a it'll be a celebration. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. Physically, yes. we are gonna be heartbroken. But spiritually, he gave us all he could give. Yeah. yeah. So, and if we have, if we haven't learned now the wisdom <laughs> and, and read Proverbs, then shame on us. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the other day, Tina and I was over there, and one of my sisters said, you know, sister so-and-so <laughs> at church, she's the Hampton kids are so well behaved. And the other lady said, if you had a dad like them that'll beat the snuff, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you messed up, you'd be well behaved too. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> exact words she said. <laughs> he said, "My daddy used to say, I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna beat you till like when I kill you, I'll beat you before God know you dead." <laughs> <laughs> And he got his bluff in. He got his bluff in at an early age, so we were all petrified. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's a true blessing, though, to have, like you yes, said. Yes, it is. Yes, like it I've is. had my dad my entire life, and not yes. very many people can say that. You know. Yes. Um, right. You know, um, I feel truly fortunate, and and brother Tommy, I, I know exactly mm -hmm. what you mean when you said that you had your dad around and. Not only was he around, but he was actively involved in my life. Yes, yes, yes. yes. What a blessing. And it's a that, true that is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah that's children that lost their dad before they knew him, you know. Mm -hmm. And we had a person to show us how to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know your dad. I love that. I'm a cowboy fan now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling for the cowboys to go all the way just because. Larry, Big Larry was a cowboy fan. Yes, he was. <laughs> you know, that's, so we all, we, to, the best legacy they leave is something that we take and run. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they're and they there with us all that time. Yes. Yeah. Because only they only left us physically. Yeah. The spirit and their soul and their teaching remain with us the rest yeah. of the time. Yeah. You know, it's... it's uh, we have people. Martin Luther King is not dead, right? Because yeah. the that he wanted for all of us to do, we're constantly doing. Mm -hmm. And then that's what we'll do for Big Larry. We'll do for my dad. Yep. And yes. loved ones that are transitioning is yes. take that part of their legacy, a part of something that you respected and love, and you incorporate that into your everyday life. Yeah. I'm just not going to whip my kids like my dad did me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'll say this, and this will be the last thing. But isn't it wonderful when a child looks like their grandparent or their great grandparent? So whenever they tr they pass on, you yeah. can see that person, right? Yes, child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Larry, that was the most beautiful picture you put on Facebook with your dad and your oh, sister yeah. mom. Yeah. Wow, yeah. man. Man, that yeah. was so cool. That was. That was. Oh, that was him. I thought it was Lawrence. <laughs> I did too. I told him Sorry. that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we know where Lauren got her looks now. Uh -huh. <laughs> She got it from her dad. Oh, <laughs> oh you, know, you know how they take pictures and make them look real old? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I understand Big Larry had the natural. That was so beautiful, boy. <laughs> I have a picture with my Afro, and people uh -huh. are like, is, is that your son, that TJ? <laughs> <laughs> I had an afro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. You would. Yeah. So we're taking that's a break good. next week. Coming back the 29th. Yes, we're going to um, re resume the 29th. 29th. The doubting tongue. Doubting tongue. And I almost want to say. Oh, the 29th. 29th. Who has that? I have a mine down on my yeah, Oh, Myrna. Yep. Okay, she said Myrna. Yeah. Who's got that? Yeah, let's see. Myrna. Myrna has it. <laughs> oh, she already. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see you. Who are you? <laughs> Come to the light. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys. And um, we won't. Uh, meet here until after Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Yeah, Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yes, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry wow. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Man, now yeah. when somebody when somebody play joy to the world, yeah, <laughs> messing it up. Uh, where's Uncle Mark? <laughs> I'd like to play some with Jewish permission. I'd like to play something for Larry and for Tommy. All right. Yeah. I mean, yes, thank you, please. <laughs> I've done it before, but I'll do it again. All right. Marge's granddaughter did a recital yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. And they sent us the video, and her mother sent it to me this morning. She is really playing well. She's playing. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. How old is Leah? 11. Wow, eleven. Mm. He wow. is doing yeah. really well. We have an eleven-year-old grandson, Uncle Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. All right, now do some connections there. <laughs> and I like her name too, Leah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Name. And she's also a little entrepreneur. Last year, she yeah. was making um stickers, all oh, kinds really? of inspirational stickers. Yeah. And she got a little business going. Plus, she bake, she bakes and sells cookies and things what? like that. What? Yes. Wow. They were getting ready to go on vacation. Yeah. And she decided she's going to sell cookies in order to have some money for her and her little sister to spend. Wow. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's awesome. And awesome. Yes, yeah, she's something else. Yeah, yeah, what's his name, Tommy? Julian Jenkins? Yeah. Is that our grandson name? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were on mute. My bad. <laughs> 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 yeah. I like Julian's name, too, not just because it starts with Jew. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can Google him. He's on his baseball team. You can Google him. He was so successful this year. <laughs> oh, man, he'll be a professional ball player. She'll be a professional uh, actress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is gonna work out. This is gonna work out. <laughs> Watch out now, it might. Yeah, that's right. Just might. Yep. Yes. Okay, Uncle Mark, take us okay. home. <laughs> so this is oh, better mute ourselves. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
tonight. <clears throat> That's for you, Larry and Tommy. Be strong. Amen. Amen. Be strong. Amen. Be, strong. Be strong. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, amazing. That great. is true, true, mm -hmm. true. Truly amazing. Yeah. I was yeah. once alone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Feel the love. Wow. Yes. Feel the love. Wow. Mm. That is so true, man. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uncle Mark, I think I was looking at some property in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to be neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, don't call the police, man. I, Uncle Mark. It's o'clock in the morning. You're not up yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh Lord. No. Mark, this is your last month of work, right? Your uh, time. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. This, All right. This, this, this right. December thirty-first. Right. Right. That this is last uh, month. I got a call from my director. director. No. no, last week. Last week. Mm -hmm. My director said they want, if I wanted to can put me on a contingent. So I asked him what does that entail? He said, well, if they need you, they'll, they'll call you. And if you can't make it, you can tell them you, can't, you don't want to come or you don't have, you can, not able to come. So nice. I told him I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Take it. that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you, you want to. Yes. Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm booking us for Las Vegas, January 12th. You said this is the last. This is the last month. So January 12th, Harris want to know if we're available. <laughs> oh, we're okay. on the road now. Man, we we have to go down to the sunny part, Arizona, Vegas, and then in the in the summer we'll swing back to Michigan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has it all planned, Mort. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, Uncle Mark, we gonna stay at Joy's house in Arizona. She don't even know it yet. <laughs> don't even know. <laughs> oh gosh. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, good night, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. 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 See you soon, son. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you talking to Larry or me, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> Good night. Bye.